Today's video is the first in a series on effective searching, beginning with Boolean operators. Boolean operators are the basis of any effective search for information. They form the underlying logic behind all searching. So a firm understanding of Boolean operators is necessary to become a competent researcher. There are three primary Boolean operators, AND, OR, and NOT. These are roughly listed from most common to least common. AND will narrow your search. When you use AND, all search terms must be present in your results. So for instance, if you search for amphibians and reptiles, then all of your results must have those two terms present. There won't be any results with only amphibians, and there won't be any results with only reptiles. A lot of times, people think the AND operator will increase their search results, which makes sense in a way. Why wouldn't you find more results if you search for amphibians and reptiles than if you search for just amphibians? Amphibians plus reptiles equals more than just amphibians, right? But that's not the case. Think of it instead as all the results of amphibians hanging out with reptiles, which is much more rare. AND is understood, meaning that any time you have more than one search term present, AND is automatically inserted. So in the previous example, if you had just typed amphibians, reptiles into your search box, then the database will automatically place an AND operator between amphibians and reptiles. Here we are in the library's OneSearch database. It's important to note that Boolean operators are universal, meaning they work anywhere you might be searching, so not just this particular database. Let's try amphibians. For now, I just want you to pay attention to the number of results that we got. 720,000 857. If we go back and add an additional term with AND, we can expect that number to go down. As you can see, we now have 191,165. So the number of results was decreased drastically. Recall that we don't have to explicitly type the AND operator we will still get the same number of results even without using it. Even if we place it in a separate box. Because as you can see, the default operator between different boxes is the AND operator. Still 191,000 165. If we continue to add additional terms, we can expect our number of results to continue to go down as well. As you can see, we're now under 100,000 results. And the more terms that we add using the AND operator, the narrower and narrower our search becomes. At some point, we may get so specific that we either get no results at all or very few results. And depending on what you're trying to do, that may be a good thing or it may be a bad thing. The OR operator will expand your search and thus increase the number of results that you get. A simple mnemonic, OR equals more. OR is really only useful for searching for synonyms or near synonyms of your search terms. Let's take a look at why. All right, so here we are back in the library's OneSearch database. Imagine you're a biology researcher and you're still on an amphibian kick. If you search for frogs, you get 1 million 252,875. So let's put that OR operator to work. Remember with OR you can find more results when you search for synonymous or near synonymous terms. 
In our case, we're going to search for frogs or toads. Yes, these are entirely different creatures, but if you'll just imagine that you're a biologist and you're studying both of these types of animals. So we will take results for either of these. What this should do is increase the number of results that we get. So previously we had 1.2 million, and now you can see that we've gone up to 1.5 million. So again, or more. Note that I've capitalized the OR operator. Some databases require this to recognize it as a Boolean operator, so I just make it a habit to always capitalize any Boolean operators. We could continue to expand our search by adding additional terms with OR. So maybe I'm searching for all different types of amphibians. I might put OR newts, OR salamanders, and that's about the extent of my knowledge. But what we can expect is, whereas before we had 1.2 with just frogs and 1.5 million with frogs or toads, now that we've added two more or uh, search terms, we're now over 2 million results. The not operator narrows your search by excluding a search term or terms. That is, you're leaving something out that you don't want to be there. A simple way to remember is, I do not want you in my search results. So you're excluding something from your search and that thus narrows your search. Let's take a look. We're going to take a slightly different approach this time and imagine that we're down on our luck librarians searching for a new job. So I've gone to indeed.com, a very popular job search site, and I'm going to show you how not can be used to effectively search and narrow down the jobs that we're looking for. So let's search for librarian. That there are 690 jobs where the word librarian shows up. We'll notice very small up here we have an, an option for advanced job search. In this case, and you'll find this from time to time in different databases and on different websites, the Boolean structure is somewhat hidden. And in order to find the not operator here, we need to examine the different search options. And essentially, what I've discovered is this option right here, with none of these words. So what that means to me is that it, you are excluding any words that you put here. So this is the equivalent of the not operator. So say I don't want a job in an academic library. In that case, I'll put the word academic. Remember previously we had 690 jobs. Now you can see that we've excluded over 200 jobs. So we've essentially left out or excluded via the not operator all of these jobs in academic libraries that we are not interested in. So you see that, yes, you can apply these Boolean search operators to your academic research, but they can also come in handy for just everyday life and the types of searches that you might find yourself conducting as a professional or on a personal level.